Hello everyone and welcome back to some more Warhammer Underworlds for the channel, although I guess we're going to have to call it Underworlds Classic going forward since we're not playing the 2024 version and never will. And we have a new warband on the table for the first time. We have Hexbane's Hunters going up against the Thrice Fold Discord. So let's go talk about both sides. So here are Hexbane's Hunters, a fairly old warband I think. Were they Nether Maze? Either way, they are new to the channel, so they're new to me. And they are led by Haskell Hexbane, which is the one holding the torch at the back there. He is joined by Amos Duncarrow, which is the large lad with the axe. Then we have Bridget Axewold, who has the pistol and the axe, ironically. And Quiet Pock. Quiet Pock has always uh, also brought along his two doggos. That one is Grotbiter, and this one is Rat Spike. And they can do a reaction move if someone with the hunter keyword finishes an action or a move. And the rest of them have the hunter keyword. So their inspire conditions though are a little different. I'm going to have to read the cards for this. Hexbane inspires if his attack action takes an enemy out of action. Duncaro inspires if his attack takes a... Oh, sorry, if an enemy takes Haskell Hexbane out of action, so he gets angry. Bridget inspires if Hexbane is inspired. Quiet Pock inspires if one of his doggos is taken out of action. So yeah, they get angry. They also have a special bonus called Price of Victory, where as they fall in battle, you can choose to get a... Uh, is it just an upgrade? Let's see. Use this skill when a friendly hunter has dealt damage that would take them out of action. Give this fighter one upgrade from your hand, or remove a charge token or a move token from them. And if you do give them an upgrade, you don't have to spend glory. So yeah, they start getting better gear or can kind of double activate potentially, double charge in a single round as they get angry for their losses. So, new warband though, so as always, expect mistakes with how they're used, but hey, we're giving them a go. One thing I will mention is Bridget and Quiet Pock are pretty easy to kill, they only have two health each, so do the dogs. It's Hexbane and Amos Duncarrow that are a bit tankier, but even then they've still only got three, so their survivability is not high so uh, they've got to work as a team and get those upgrades out for free i guess and the demons of slanesh the thrice fold discord we've seen them a few times a very fun warband they do not like each other in any way shape or form they inspire if a certain one of their other team is so bad at rolling they roll nothing but failures and that'll inspire them we have vexmore the big lazy one we have vashtus the coiled which is the spellcaster and then we have laxfear the bladed blessing he is the assassin and the weakest of the three. It's five health, four health, three health. But all of them still have equal to or more than any of Hexbane's hunters. So, we'll get set up, be back to show you where everyone is deploying, where the objectives are, after this brief word from my channel sponsors. This video is sponsored by Noble Knight Games. Check out the video description below for an affiliate link that will take you through to their store and it will help me out as well. Thanks. And with that done, we are back seeing where everyone is. There's only one unused deployment space in the bottom left down here for Hexbane's Hunters, because they are a group of six. And the Thricefold Discord have been a little bit brave. Uh, Vexmore moves very slowly and doesn't particularly want to attack until he has upgrades, because he only rolls one attack die, but he hits like a truck. He's very lazy. I think I said that already, but he is exceptionally lazy. And then we have Lagsphere at the back here. Doggo's up front, they're expendable as sad as that is to say, and if one of them goes down, well, one of the team inspires, so it's a benefit. So with that, let's just flip over for your purposes to see where the five objectives are. We have in reverse order, one, two, three, or rather three, two, one, I guess is in the order I did it, and then five and four over here. It will be Hexbane's Hunters going first in round one. Let's see how this plays out. So first up for Hexbane's Hunters was Quiet Pock, who did a charge action, or, well, a charge, yeah, which is a, a move and an attack. And the dogs, who I forgot to mention are not worth any glory if they die, um, they have the rule called Loyal Hound, I think it is. They can do a move action as a reaction to a hunter's move action. Now, presumably because a charge is a move plus an attack and it is called that, it's a super action, it's two combined, the move part of that counts. If it doesn't, Apologies. Only one of the dogs moved anyway, and it was Grotbiter, who can move four, and he moved there just to do a defensive double support for Quiet Pock in case anybody goes after him. Once per round, Quiet Pock can fire that crossbow of his. It has reload, so he has to reload it for the rest of the turn. 
It's two dice, looking for hammers with knockback one on it. He shot into Vexmore, who has one defense die. It ended up with the wrong person, but it was him who rolled it. He failed, so that is two damage, knocked back one. But that does also mean that Laxvir down here has inspired, because Vexmore's defense roll had no successes. So, swings and roundabouts, I guess. Vexmore has three health left. During the power phase, Hexbane's hunters played nothing. However, the Thricefold Discord kind of thrive in this section. They played Illusion of Power as one of the Temptation cards. The other player has to pick whether or not you each take one upgrade from hand and apply it without spending any glory, or they discard, discard rather two power cards, or one if they only have one in their hand. The former was picked in this case, so both sides get to equip an upgrade for free, no glory required. We'll just cover the Thricefold Discords first. They are equipping Song of Corruption on Vashtis the Coiled. Enemy fighters within two hexes of this fighter support this fighter's attack action, so they count as friendlies for the purposes of supports. Doesn't actually do anything else beyond that, but that's still pretty powerful. Uh, Hexbane's Hunters are picking Protected Band, and they are giving it to Amos Duncarrow, since it's him on the art. You can re-roll one die in this fighter's defense rolls. The target of this fighter's attack actions cannot have supporting fighters. Attackers that target this fighter cannot have support fighters either. This card cannot be broken. So, no one counts as supporting when he is attacked or is attacking them, and he gets to re-roll. Which is pretty good. I think he gets two defense dice on his inspired side, so that seems like a really decent upgrade for him. So we'll go on to the power phase in a second, but let's just cover the first activation for the Thrice Fold Discord, because we did forget something. Vexmore has the Locus of Indolence, which means that if his defense roll contains no successes from an attack that hits him at point-blank range, it's minus one damage to a minimum of one, so he actually only has one damage on him, not two. So he has four health left, not three. Just covering that, caught it. Anyway, first activation was... Vashtis the Coiled, she stayed precisely where she was and just did her spell attack action, three hexes into this poor doggo here, needing the swirls, she got one, they're needing dodges, so it was a failure, only one damage though, so the dog is alive on one health. The Thricefold Discord played nothing in the power phase, however, You Stand Accused was played by Hexbane's Hunters, I keep on wanting to say every one of these cards in Salt Spire's voice from Vermintide, because Hexbane to me is just Salt Spire. But anyway, you stand accused. Choose one enemy fire plus one die to attack actions made by friendly fighters that target that chosen fire. This effect persists until the chosen fighter is out of action or until they end an activation in your territory. So it's either to force her forwards or WC is dead. So that's pretty interesting. So that's just going to stay at the corner of the table just to remind us. And it is being played on Vashtis right there. So with that, we'll go over to the second activation for Hexbane. So with that protective brand upgrade keeping him safe, Amos Duncaro activated and did a charge action to go after Vashtis. Just realised there should have been an extra die. Not that it matters because, yeah. Two dice normally, should have been three because of the you stand accused. Looking for hammers for two damage, he had one success. Double shields for Vashtis is a fail. And that means that not only does the damage get through, two, so half her health, but Vexmore has inspired. He tries a little harder on his inspired side. He rolls two attack dice and still hits like a truck. So she was looking for dodges and even though she had two defense dice, figured she was the safest. Nope, although Vexmore also rolls two defense dice on his inspired side, so not all bad. No power phase cards played by either side. So the second activation for the Thricefold Discord was Vashtis again. She once again did her spell attack action. Two dice looking for swirls for a single point of damage against the poor doggo, and Rat Spike is no more. As mentioned, they do not give up glory when they go down, however, so nothing scored there, but the Threshold Discord do score one for Cruel Chorus right here. Score this immediately after your Warband casts a second or subsequent spell in the same phase, and how very apt because it's one of the Hexbane's group on here. So that scored for one, which was then spent to give Bridget Axwold the Helm of Insight as a false gift. So she now has an upgrade that makes her defense stat two shields. They cannot be modified any further. The fighter cannot have line of sight to enemy fighters that are more than two hexes away. They have to waste a, an action in a round to break the card off of her. And that's because she has range three on her pistols. They're not super scary, but I think she, she gets a rule called Volley which means the first time she makes the attack action with the pistols, 
she actually gets plus one die and plus two damage if they're oh they have to be adjacent but either way that'll force her forwards and she's easier to kill so just putting that upgrade on her and was there anything else to cover oh yes because one of the doggos died quiet pock inspires what changes on his inspired side he goes up plus one die on his crossbow shot and his basic attack has hammers for successes instead of swords he does not change his hp up that end of the table, Bridget acts Wold activated and just did a movement action. She moves three hexes, which is pretty slow actually, but stopped next to Pock and then triggered the reaction on Grotbiter for a hunter finishing a movement action. They moved again. I know technically we should have two movement icons, but it doesn't matter. So the doggo has kind of retreated to force someone to chase him down if they want him at the top of the table there, and no side is playing any cards. A bunch of stuff happened next, so we're going to have to cover it in steps with the power phase following. But for the activation phase, Vexmore activated, charged as much as he can, and went after Amos. Supported by Vashtis right next to him, attacked twice, got a crit on one of the two dice he rolls. Even with the re-roll, the best Amos could muster was a successful normal defense, but he needed that crit. So the full three damage got through from Vexmore, and that is a kill. So... That is one glory for the kill, and also one glory for escalating screams. Scorvus immediately after a friendly fire successfully supported attack action. So, that is them up to three now. When a friendly goes down, the price of victory kicks in, and the Lantern of Vengeance is being given to Pock for free. It doesn't cost glory. It gives him... A spell to do and he counts as a wizard level X where X is equal to the number of out of action hunters so it doesn't count the dogs but it counts the humans so he now has that and it can deal damage to one enemy within range if he succeeds in casting it so just a little upgrade for him there but I think there's more happening in the power phase so let's process all that as well yeah so in the power phase well earned rest was played by the Thraceful Discord you give it to the opponent, the opponent picks either one of their fighters gets a charge token given by the Thricefold Discord, or two of the Thricefold Discord can remove their charge tokens. The former was chosen, so we have to move over here, but Hexbane has a charge token, so I guess he's going to be doing a move. In playing that, they triggered, what was it, Thoughts of Indolence? No, it was Born of Damnation, that's the name of it. Scorbus immediately after playing your second or subsequent temptation card in the same phase. I think that was actually their third, but they only just drew into this card. So that is another glory spent there. In the same power phase, Lead the Crusade is being played by Hexbane's Hunters. You, it's a, well, actually, it's a reaction, so it should have already been played, but either way, it's still the same phase. So because a hunter got taken out of action, you can choose a friendly hunter and inspire them and draw one power card. Hexbane was chosen, so he's now inspired, which in turn has made Brigitte. Or Bridget, rather, Inspire. So every human for Hexbane Hunters left on the table is now Inspired. I think that covered everything. Well, with Hexbane stuck with that charge token now, it was a bit of a lackluster end to round one for his Hunters. Bridget activated, did a second move action. Kind of body blocked for the Doggo there. Uh, actually, the Doggo was supposed to move. Going running. It's going for a jog. It's getting its exercise. It moved its three into the corner there. Uh, up there, it's going right into the corner, and that means we're over to the Thricefold Discord's final activation for round one. I guess Vashtis just really hates dogs because the final activation was a charge action by her to move a couple of hexes just to get within range three of that doggo to do another spell attack action and got a crit, but that doggo dodged lightning because he got a crit too, so whatever that spell was, he just deftly avoided it, taking us to the end phase. At the end of a pretty strong round one for the Thricefold Discord, they're scoring nothing in the end phase, so they are ending round one on the four glory they have earned throughout that turn. Forgot to mention, but You Stand Accused is still in effect on Vashtis as we go into the next round because she did not go into enemy territory and she has not been taken out of action, so she's still got that on her. In the end phase, though, Hexbane's Hunters are scoring a couple of cards. Uncover the Truth for one which is Scorbus in the end phase if there are two or more friendly fighters in enemy territory. So that's why Bridget and the dog went for a walk. They're scoring two for Proof of Guilt. This has three different potential ways to score. The one that matters is the middle one, which is each surviving enemy fighters, or at least one, 
is in the same player's territory. So that has scored for two. They're a heretic for doing that, I guess. Witch hunters just make up whatever stuff they like. So, as we go into round two, um, the Threshold Discord are only ahead by one glory now. So I guess Hexbane's hunters make back a lot of the difference in the end phase, it seems like. So with that, we'll go through to round two. And as we start round two, it's going to be the Thrice Fold Discord going first this time. It was Laxvir that got round two started for the Thrice Fold Discord, and he was inspired earlier because of Vash's ruining a role, can't remember now. Either way, on his Inspire side, he is very scary. He moves five, so he went after Quiet Pock. He rolls three dice looking for hammers with Grievous on crits, two damage base. He got a crit, so it's technically doing three if it goes through, and Quiet Pock with his defense roll. So even the base damage is enough that Quiet Pock, oops, is, he's very spiky, it's hard to move around him, is out of there and will not be contributing with that Lantern of Vengeance anymore. The price of victory kicks in, so Hexbane himself is being given a lucky Hexbeak foot, which is just plus one defense, which is pretty nice. So he is up to two defense dice because he does still only have the one on his inspired side. And now we're going to move on to the power phase. Yep, so a lot happened in the power phase too. First of all, Pavain of Slanesh was played. It's a spell. You are looking for a lightning bolt. If cast, choose an enemy fighter within three. Either push them one or deal one damage. So within three of Vashtas, she picked the doggo and dealt one damage to it. Uh, we'll just cover the other thing that the Thrice Discord did. Although it did obviously jump over to Hexbane there. But they then use Soul Slice Shards, which is another spell Vashta's cast. Um, the dice are there. She did roll the Lightning Bolt. That's the second roll. That's all that matters for the first roll because she just got what she needed. This one also needed a single Lightning Bolt. If cast, deal one damage to an enemy fighter that is furthest from the caster. So Hexbane has taken one damage over here also. Two glory has been spent by Hexbane's Hunters to give two upgrades. Hexbane has been given Martyr's Fervor. Plus one damage to this fighter's range, one range to attack actions if he's targeting a model with four or more wounds. So that'll be good against Vexmore. And Bridget is being given Cold Iron Nails. It's given to anyone who has the Hunter keyword. She has it. Each time this fighter's range, one attack action takes a target out of action. You can gain one glory. Or you can make sure they can't be rezzed. Raised, sorry. The MMO in me came out there. Um, so that would be really good against like the Sepulchral Guard or, or similar. It just removes their ability. It kills them dead forever. It's a pretty cool upgrade. Not super relevant, that part anyway, for the Thrycehold Discord, but just a cool upgrade in general. First up for Hexbane's Hunters was Bridget. She did a charge action onto Objective 1 there, triggered the Doggo's reaction to her doing a move, and he's kind of followed back a little bit up there. So she gets two choices. She could attack with her axes, three dice looking for hammers with Scything, on her inspired side for two damage or she can use her volley pistols three dice looking for swords for just one damage base but then she actually doesn't get both benefits if she's attacking someone adjacent she has to pick plus two damage or one extra die she chose the two extra damage and attacked with her volley pistols they have cleave as well on her inspired side which is very relevant she had one success that would be a successful block for laxfear but cleave means it had to be a crit because that just means that the shields don't count and the plus two damage she picked means the laxfear boom headshot she took him out so he is out of there for one glory no other cards or anything scoring off the back of that just one glory for the kill in the power phase circle of silvered grave salt is being played it's a domain enemy fighters treat hexes adjacent to friendly hunters as lethal hexes in addition to other hex types which means they take one damage from moving into them the effect persists until the end of the round until this gambit deals damage to an enemy fire or until a friendly fire makes a move action or puts another domain into play so they're putting down a little salt circle to try and protect themselves from a reprisal for taking out one of the discord Vexmore did not care for the salt and did a charge action adjacent to Bridget, taking one damage from the salt, uh, the grave salt, the silvered grave salt. So that's out of there. He then struck at her and got two successes, one of which was a crit. She got a crit of her own, so they cancelled out, but unfortunately her other defence die was a whiff. Keep in mind she had that Helm of Insight, so her defence was actually looking for shields. Not that it mattered because this support does nothing for her. And that's three damage on a two health model. So Bridget is out of there 
And for his uh, reaction with Price of Victory, there's no upgrades to be had, so the move token is being removed off the doggle. Oh, we know, it has to be a hunter, right? Um, give this fighter one. Oh, actually, uh, yeah, the dogs don't have Price of Victory, it's only the hunters. So, unfortunately, Hexbane can't even get any advantage off of that happening because he doesn't have a move or charge token or an upgrade from hand that can be played for free. Oof. Well, at least you took someone out first. Well, Haskell, Hexbane is not taking this lying down. He did a charge action. That's as close as he could get to Vexmore, but he has black powder pistols that can be used up to range 3. He also has just a true fire brand as his close combat weapon. But he used the pistols, 3 dice, looking for swords for a base of 2 damage. He didn't get any swords, but he did get a crit, which got through Vexmore's two successful defense rolls because he didn't roll a crit. And because of that Martyr's Fervor upgrade, he is at range 2, so that's plus 1 damage. So instead of 2 damage, it did 3, and thanks to that little bit of salt damage Vexmore took, he's out of there. And because he is a 5 wound model, that's 2 glory. So all of a sudden, they're making a little bit of a comeback. Well, <laughs> Hexbane and his one surviving dog are making a bit of a comeback because that's him up to 246 versus 246. It's actually a draw now with technically one model each. I mean technically not because the dog's there but the dog can't do much. He's just there to support if anything else. Seems out of spite more than anything else but Tavashtis knows that Hexbane can only move or attack since he's got that charge token. So she's relatively safe this round. So she just fired some magic at the doggo. The doggo wasn't as lucky this time. One damage with the one it's already got, the double is out of here. So, that still means that she is able to charge in their final activation, but it depends what Haskell does. Is he going to retreat? That's the question. She has to move into his territory to get rid of the You Stand Accused, but she also only has two health left. That's, that's tricky. Second last activation of the second round. This is going to be a quick final round. Haskell opted to cycle an objective card, draw one, discard one, just to try and get some, some more scoring opportunities since there isn't much else for him to do at the end of this round, really. On that note, it's over to the final activation of round two for the Thricefold Discord. To complete that game, said the freaky Slaneshian Demon, because they also cycled an objective card. Back over to Hexbane for his final activation of the second round. And stop me if you've heard this one before, but Hexbane once again cycled an objective card, just really trying to improve scoring opportunities. And that takes us to the end phase. Well, it's quite the standoff we have here because both surviving models on the table have two health left. Both have the capability to do two damage in a single attack. Both are rolling two defense dice. Haskell is because of his upgrade, but still, both are rolling two defense dice. And... They're just staring each other down, the rest of their warband's dead. In the end phase, Haskell was unable to cycle into anything worthwhile, scoring nothing. So they're ending round two on six. Triumph of Carnality is scoring for one for the Thricefold Discord. Score is an end phase if four or more fighters have one or more wound counters or are out of action. There is like six out of action if you count the dogs. And a bunch of people still have wounds, including the two that are surviving. So that means as we go into the final round, that makes the Thricefold Discord, who's down to a single person, pull ahead ever so slightly with seven playing six. Let's go into round three and see how this ends, and I'm sure it's going to be quick. Well, as we see this standoff again at the top of the final round, it really kind of came down to how brave does the person who has priority want to be. And in this case, it's the Thricefold Discord who have once again taken first activation. They have to get within range 2 to have enough damage to kill Hexbane. Will they go for it? Will they try and just outrange them? Because they're already winning. Hexbane would have to catch up, which means doing a move. Well, he could technically do a charge. He has range 3. So he has a threat radius of 6 hexes if you add on his range to his movement. So I think it's impossible for Vashtis to get fully out of range. So that might influence what happens next. Well, it had to be go for broke. Vash disactivated, did a charge action, moved forwards four hexes, went right into Hexbane's face. Also means after this activation, you stand accused is discarded because she's ended an activation in enemy territory. She attacked, two dice looking for hammers for two damage. She got a crit. Hexbane managed to whiff both his defense dice. The bonus one from Lucky Hexbeak Foot. He was looking for shields, but he needed a crit. So that's two damage. So you'd think he'd be dead, 
But wait, there's more. By hook or by crook, reaction was played. Reaction, play this after a friendly hunter with one or more upgrades is dealt damage. Reduce the damage by one to a minimum of one. So you know what that means, that two damage becomes one damage, which means Hexbane is alive on one health and will actually get a chance to try and finish off the demon. We have to do the power phase, still wanted to cover all that first. Let's see what each side is playing. Well, it's actually the power phase that has Hexbane's first attempted murder of Vashtis. Making a point was played in the power phase. Nothing uh, from the Thricehold Discord. Choose a friendly Amos, Bridget or Haskell. They make the following attack. Range 3, two dice looking for swords for one damage with finisher where if they're vulnerable, which just means they have one health left, you get plus one die and cleave. So ignore that part. Got one success, but Vashtis successfully blocked it. So now we're going to Haskell's actual activation where he's going to try and do it the old fashioned way. Oh, and the first clash of blows is a draw. One success from Haskell attacking with that true fire brand and one successful defense. Oh wait, it's not a successful defense. Vashtis needs dodges. It's the other two that use shields. Never mind. I uh, forgot that. Uh, so yeah, she, she needs dodges. So never mind, that actually did get through for two damage. Oh well, the fight was going to continue, but no it hasn't. Haskell took her head off. So, whoops. Well, that means that with the finish of that attack action, the Thrice Discord have been tabled. That doesn't really matter in this game. The game still does continue because there is other opportunities to score. But that is one glory gained for the kill there. And uh, yeah, one more scored for an eye for an eye. Which is a friendly fighter takes an uh, enemy fighter out of action. If one or more friendly fighters are already out of action. So you're getting revenge. Eye for an eye. So that scores two. Which I think puts them ahead by one. Because two would be two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, seven. It does. It puts them ahead by one. So if nothing changes, they've now won. But again, there's still opportunities. So I've moved Hexbane to the middle of the map just for dramatic effect, but what followed was back and forth activations of purely cycling objective cards looking for scoring opportunities. So we're just going to go straight to the end phase now with all that cycled and done. Um, there is opportunities for both sides I believe to score points, but not many. Uh, sowing doubt for Hexbane's Hunter, score this in the end phase if one or more enemy fighters are out of action and one or more of those enemy fighters had a, an upgrade. So. Hopefully in focus there. So that scores for one, taking them to nine. Right, two, four, six, eight. Yep, that is nine added up altogether. Unfortunately, Triumph of Paramountcy is scoring for the Threshold Discord, and it's worth three. Scorvis in the end phase if a leader is the only surviving fighter in one or more warbands. Hexbane's the leader, so that is three. That means they win by one, isn't it? Uh, let's see, there's one, two, three. How many is that in total? Let's see, two, four, six, eight, ten. They brought it back at the last second. The Thricefold Discord win, ten to nine. Well, I guess the lesson there is that's why it's important to cycle your objectives as a potential action, because sometimes you draw into the winning card. It's like Maverick. Anyway, still, Hexbane won the battle as the sole survivor on the battlefield filled with the corpses of his enemies and friends, but lost the war because the Thricefold Discord did win today. They still had an okay showing. They fold like paper in terms of how much health they have. They can die to one attack from most basic enemies, let alone elite warbands like this. So you've got to get those upgrades on, and I think you've got to sacrificial lamb a couple of them just to get the Inspire train going. So, yeah, interesting. They are an older warband. They're not going to be updated anymore now because they'll have to use the new stuff. And we're going to be ignoring that here because the new stuff is awful. Look at how fantastic the art is on these old cards. And it was just horrible, straight up, boring pictures of minis. Such a bad decision. So, yeah, there will be warband, uh, uh, Underworld, rather, featured on the channel every now and then. And it's going to be what we'll refer to as classic Underworld, not this new tripe that they are making desperately to try and make a quick buck before shelving the game forever in my opinion no proof of that that's just what i think they're doing with it 
Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I sincerely hope you enjoyed. Please do remember to share support, liking, commenting, subscribing, or if you can spare it, consider becoming a channel member to get early access to certain video series and just help out. Or you can check out the channel sponsor. They cover most of the, or have stock from most of the games I cover on the channel, if not all of them. And if you buy anything through that affiliate link, I get compensated. Either way, thank you for watching though, and see you next time. Ta-ta for now.